Good afternoon, Physics 20. I hope you guys are doing well today. So what we're going to be working on is we're going to be filming, or filming, I'm filming. You guys are going to be learning about our introduction to two-dimensional kinematics. So everything that we have done up until this point has all been one dimensional. So up and down or back and forward. Well, now we're gonna be looking at both, or, or at, at motion that has components that is both back and forth and up and down. University, you get to add three dimensions into your math. So for now, we're just looking at two dimensions in high school. All right, so what that means is we're gonna be using angles which means we're going to be using trigonometry. So my advice, ladies and gentlemen, is sometime in this next little while, take a chance to go back and brush up a little bit on your trig and on your math. And that, um, so your trig from math last year, which is going to be a really, really, really big help for you guys. Sounds good? All right. So welcome. Enjoy the pun. Complimentary angles. Yeah, it's a good one. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is we've got... We're dealing with two-dimensional vectors. Now once again, remember vector. They have direction and magnitude. So velocity, displacement, etc. They're going to have, when they're on 2D, they're going to have an X component and a Y component to them. So for example, you can drive your car, say, northwest or southeast, right? You don't have to drive like just north or just south. So what we have here is we've got, let's look at that. So when you look at that particular line, you can see that there is both an X and a Y component to it. So, and truly, like it, it doesn't matter how you get from here to here. Like I could go here, and then to there. I could take the blue route. I could take the red route. I could do this. Sorry, my dog's barking at something. I have no idea what Freya wants. Yeah, so it, it doesn't really matter how you get from here to here. Remember that the resultant is going to be the net of those directions. Hello, Freya. Hello, what is it, doggy? So she's not at take care today. She's here. So probably going to be seeing a puppy snoot in here a few times. All right. So when we're going to be looking at our, our resultant, okay. So our definition, ladies and gentlemen, of our resultant vector, it's the sum of our X and Y component. So it's the, the net. Okay, so you can also define it as the shortest distance between the starting point and the end point. So if we're going to be calculating distance, well, it does matter that I take this route and then this route, or the red route or the green route. Whereas vector, it's going to be our net, the shortest distance from start to finish. So it, it doesn't matter what route you take. Okay, it's going to be the net, okay? Now our resultant is going to be at an angle. So that means the direction of the resultant must include an angle. So ladies and gentlemen, for from now on, in this unit, and in some cases in our next couple of units, you're going to need an angle as direction. Direction is no longer going to be up down. It's going to be 25 degrees north of west, say. Okay, so we're going to look at that part today. 
And we're going to really focus on how to read these angles because this is really tricky stuff. We're going to take our time with it. And then um, after that, we are going to look at um, a little bit about scale diagrams. Um, now, if you are watching this from home um, because COVID and you have a runny nose or what have you and you've been told to stay home, don't worry about the scale drawing stuff, only worry about the angles. Uh, the scale drawings are not going to be on any tests, quizzes, or assignments. Okay? Okay. So, angles, however, vital. So, there are going to be a couple of different ways that we can look at your angles. Okay? Now, two methods that we are going to be looking at to record your angles. Okay. First of all, the very first thing you need to do always is start by drawing grid lines at the starting point of your vector. Okay, because we're going to be using our north, south, east, and west for a lot of it, and sometimes we're going to be using bearing. So, ladies and gentlemen, the very first thing you're going to need to do is your grid lines. Okay, north, south, east, west. Okay? Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is because when we are going to be using our angles, they need a reference point. If I say 25 degrees, well, 25 degrees and compared to what? So, because we are going to be looking at a comparison, that means, or like 25 degrees, we're going to need north of east, south of east, right? Okay. Okay. So, you have to draw your red line so we have a reference. Okay. So, the first one is either cardinal or Cartesian. Okay. This is the one we use the most frequently in physics 20. These are the ones that you're going to use the most frequently in physics 30. Um, but sometimes you will see bearing on occasion, but most of the time it is going to be this Cartesian method. So with this one, we use north, south, east, and west. Okay. And the vector diagram is going to be referenced to the nearest axis. Now that's as a rule of thumb. So I'm going to show you how I can give two possible angles for um, each of these and still get your points. All right. Okay. So as always, the very first thing you do, you have your two dimensional vector. You are going to draw your grid lines north, south, east, west. Okay. So you are starting here and you're winding up over here. Okay. Now, remember with your vectors uh, from last year in Science 10, you will have learned that your vectors go from tip to tail. So the tail of the vector is where you start and the tip of the vector is where you finish. Okay? Okay. We will talk more about that um, in our next lesson. So there are two different ways in which you can communicate this. Um, I am going to often use the colors of red and blue. So we'll talk about red theta and blue theta. So theta, remember, means angle. So let's talk about what I'm going to call red theta. So that just means I have drawn it in red. That's all it means. So red theta, let's pretend that red theta is 36 degrees. Okay. Well, I need to give red theta a reference. I can't simply say 36 degrees because I can make 36 degrees over here, over here, over here. We need a reference point. We need to know 36 degrees away from what? Well, we are going to look first at this side here. Well, 36 degrees is going to be closest to this east line. Okay. So we, it's as if we start at the closest axis. And then we move towards the other one. This line is 36 degrees north of east. Okay. So what this means is I'm going to make the line pink here. 
is that you would start at this east axis and you would move north of that line 36 degrees. Okay, I have a phone call coming in which I need to take, so I'm just gonna pause this and then I will be back. All right, I'm back. Sorry about the interruption. So we're going to now look at what I I'm going to call blue theta, simply because I've written it in blue ink. Okay, so when we're going to look at blue theta, well, blue theta now has another reference point. Now, what is going to be the angle between the north and the east line? 90 degrees, it's a right angle. So in order to get their complementary angles from the pun earlier, yeah? So our theta is 90 degrees, okay, minus 36 degrees is going to give you your 54 degrees. Now, so blue theta has a magnitude of 54, but it needs a reference. We can't just say 54 degrees. Blue theta is going to be referenced to the near axis that is nearest to it. Well, in this case, it is nearest to that north axis. Okay, so what that means is we are going to start at the north. I'm going to actually change the color from pink. I'm going to go to green here. So it's going to this green. It's going to start with this green line, and it's going to move towards that blue line. Okay, so you start at north and you move towards the east. It is east of the north line. Okay, so the blue theta is 54 degrees east of north. It is 54 degrees east of the north line. Okay, okay. I know this stuff is tricky. Okay, we are going to do another one. And take your time with these. Practice, 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 practice this. Because it is tricky and we are going to be using this from pretty much now on out um, in physics. All right, Eo? Okay. So as always, our first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw our grid lines on our angle, whoopsie. And draw your grid lines on your vector. And there we go, okay. North, south, east, west. Now there are two correct ways that you can do this. There are two correct answers that I will accept. The same way over here, I would accept 36 degrees east of, east of north or excuse me, north, 36 degrees north of east, or 54 degrees east of north. Both of these I would give points for. Okay, same here. There are two angles that I would accept points for. So let's start with red theta. Red theta is going to say, I don't know, let's make it 15 degrees. Why not? But it is going to need a reference point. Well, the, ang the axis that is closest okay, is going to be the south side, okay? So what this means is that it is at the south and moves towards the east. So with this pink line, you start at the south and move to the east to get to that line. It is east of the south line. So because it is east of the south line, red theta is 15 degrees east of south. Okay. Let's look at this again from the perspective of blue theta. So I'm gonna use a green line here to show where we're going. For this one, blue theta, the closest axis is east. So that means in order to get there, we start at the east line and we move towards the south. So that means that blue theta, now how are we gonna get the size? What was the magnitude? Good, 90 degrees 
minus 15 because this angle here is 90 degrees. Okay, so that's going to give you your 75 degrees. And what is the reference of so 75 degrees? South of east. Start at that east line and move south. South of the east line. So we write it as south of east. Okay? All right. So if on a question, this is your final answer here, I will accept either this or this as full points. Okay? Because they mean the same thing. They just have a different reference point. And generally speaking, the best answer would be where you have the smallest angle. So in this case, red theta would be a little bit better than blue, but I don't really care. They, they mean the same thing. And you are going to see questions, um, like answers in your workbook that will have a different angle than what you've got but it might have a different reference point. So therefore you might still be right, but in your debt and your practice problems, they're only going to give you one of the two possible answers. So if you want to check to see, Oh, well, my angle's different. Did I do it right? We'll take nine, 90 minus your answer. And if you get that same answer, then, then you're, or then you get the right answer in the book, then you did it right. Okay. Okay. So this is the method that we use the most is the Cartesian method. That's what most of your questions are going to be using. Okay. Now the bearing method or navigators method. Okay. This one we use less often, but it still gets used. Now in this case, all of the axes are in reference to north and north is zero degrees. That is the big important part here. So when you record your angle, you start at the north axis and rotate clockwise. Okay. Okay. So north is going to be zero degrees. All right. So you still draw your grid lines. You still write your zero degrees up there. And let's say that I give you, oh, this guy here. I say this is, no, uh, I don't want that to be 65. I want that to be 25. I give this guy an angle of 25 degrees. So red theta. However, I say I need navigators. I need the navigator. I need, I need this in bearing. Okay. Well, what that means is you need to find that blue path. You need to find blue theta there. That's what we want for bearing. Well, how would I get that? 90 minus 25. So theta is going to say, give you 90 minus 25, which is going to be your theta B as 65 degrees. Now we want it in bearing. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, what this means is we say 65 degrees bearing, or you can say this as bearing, that is the messiest B I've written in a long time, or you can say bearing 65 degrees. That's supposed to be a degree sign. There we go. Okay, because we're starting at zero and then we're going around. Okay. So if you give me an angle on an, on an assignment in bearing, that's okay. I will happily mark a written response question if your, your theta is in bearing, if you prefer bearing. But most of your multiple choice angle questions are going to be in Cartesian. Okay. So you kind of have to know both, but Cartesian is going to be the most common. So let's try another one. Okay. So I say that's zero degrees and I want this in bearing and I give you guys this value is 30 degrees. Okay. Well, how would you put this in bearing? Well, we have to start at the North and we have to go clockwise. I'm going to use a green arrow here. So you have to start here and you have to go all the way around to that line. So we need to know 
the angle from here to here. Well, how do we find that? Well, what is the angle from here to this line? 90 degrees. What's the angle from here to here? 180 degrees. What's the angle over here? 270 degrees. So our green arrow has gone all the way around 270 degrees to this point, and then the remaining 30. So let's call it green theta, which is going to be bearing. How would I solve for that? 270 degrees plus 30 degrees. So that is going to give you 300 degrees. So you can communicate this. So as green theta would be 300 degrees bearing, or you can communicate this as bearing 300 degrees. Okay, so technically speaking, when it comes to your final answer on any assignments or tests or quizzes, as you absolutely can give me three possible right answers for your angle, I will mark any of the three correct, any of the two Cartesian options or bearing, okay? Most of the time your answer, it's going to be easiest to put it in Cartesian. Most of your multiple choice is going to be in Cartesian, but you do need to know both. All right, guys. Okay. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, the angles are going to be used um, from now on. That's the most important part of this lesson. Now, this next part is going to be scale diagrams. Scale diagrams, we're going to talk about very briefly on the video. In class, we'll go in more in depth because it's really good practice with the angles. So we got a treasure hunt activity, which will take up most of the class. Um, if you missed that lesson because you were at home for COVID, don't worry about it. Um, look at this example to kind of get the idea and you're not going to see it on any test quizzes or assignments. Okay. So the reason why we don't use scale diagrams so much anymore is because of the level of inaccuracy. Um, and back in the day, like, this is how it was done. And scale diagrams were used on maps for like, old ship's captains to figure out where they needed to go. But we don't use that anymore. We, use, we tend to use the math that we are going to be looking on the next couple of sections or computers to get us to do the math for you. Um, it's a pilot suit. They have a, um, a lot of cool tricks up their sleeve for with math wise. And we'll look at some of them. And a lot of computers do do this stuff for them now. Um, so the calculating the method with vectors that we're going to point to in the next couple of sections is going to be the more important part. So this is how it used to be done. All right. So in summary, if you are watching this, from home because you are sick or for because of whatever COVID reasons, uh, watch it, get an idea of how it works. We're not going to see it much again. If you have already seen that, then the lesson in class on the treasure hunting section, awesome. We will have gone into this in more depth than we're going to here. Okay. All right. So we're not doing the treasure hunting section in here. So ladies and gentlemen, you guys are going to have to bear with me here. Um, as in order to do this, I need a ruler and you need a protractor. Okay. Now I have already kind of done this previously. I don't have a protractor here. Of course, it's in my filing cabinet at work. And as you can tell, I am filming at home. I have a ruler. So the angle we're going to use is going to be the angle that I used previously when I did this with the protractor. All right, cool. So what I am going to do now is I am going to adjust this screen and you get to look at my ceiling. Okay. You know what? I don't really, yeah, you could look at my ceiling. Now yeah, you're looking at my window. So for this example, you are going to drive, 
Um, you know what I'm actually going to do? I, have a, I know where a stylus might be. It might be helpful to write on this. I just need to pause the video. If I can do this. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and go find a stylus that will actually work on the touch screen. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Let us continue so you guys can go back to looking at my ceiling. So you're going to take your ruler and we are going to look at this question here. So for this guy, you drive 3.5 kilometers west um, before turning and driving your 75 or 7.8 kilometers north. So I'm going to use a scale. Now for this, you guys have to use a scale. Now I accidentally unplugged that, which I need. Sorry, I'm having computer problems again. There we go. Yeah, so I need that. There we go. So you need a scale, ladies and gentlemen. Now your scale, I'm going to use one centimeter is going to equal one kilometer. Okay, so that's my scale. That's, that's the very important part about scale diagrams is you need a reference. I can't grab like a kilometer long stick to do the math. So I'm going to scale it down. I'm going to use a centimeter is going to equal a kilometer. It'll be easy. And this is actually better done on grid paper. Okay, but sadly, I don't have grid paper for this thing. Okay, so you are going to take your ruler and you are going to then measure so 3.5 kilometers west. So I'm going to take my ruler and I am going to measure 3.5 kilometers. The stylus only sort of works on the touch screen. Let's see if I can do it. Yeah, it doesn't like this very much. Sorry guys, this is really tricky to do here. Yeah, it doesn't like this. Oh, that's because that stylus is on that. Okay, let's try this. Let's see if this is better. Okay. Kind of. I'm sorry, guys. This is just definitely a bit of a disaster here. Um, so I am trying really hard to... do this properly. Maybe I can do it this way. Okay. Let's try this. This might work. There we go. We figured it out. So we've got this here as our 3.5 kilometers going west. And then we're going north. Ah, oh, goodness. This is like the most awkward video lesson. Is I draw, I drew this way too far higher up on the page. So what I need to, because we're going north. So because we're going north, I actually have to redraw my line farther down. So I'm not taking up a squidgy little space. I'm actually giving myself plenty of space to work here. All right. There's my 3.5 centimeter line. Now I'm using a ruler for this. I actually have my ruler on the um, uh, writing tablet here. And then what we've got with that 3.5 kilometers, we have to draw an arrow. Ladies and gentlemen, your vectors must have arrows. Okay. And the arrow is going to be pointing in the direction that is actually going. So this guy is going 3.5 kilometers west. So that arrow is going to be pointing to the west. Okay. So the next piece that's going to have to happen is you go 7.8 kilometers north. Okay. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to try that again. This is really hard to do with the tech that I've got. So I do apologize for this being like the most awkward question ever to attempt to watch me do. I do this on a, um, 
actual uh, sheet of paper in class is so much easier. Okay. All right, that's as good as I'm going to get, guys. Okay. As good as we're going to get. It's supposed to be a perfectly straight line, but I just don't have the technological ability to do that. I am sorry, guys. Okay, let's... let's so maybe I can draw this at least a little bit better freehand. It's a little bit better, maybe. Okay. Yours is going to look nicer because you're going to use it. You're going to have the ability to draw this on an actual ruler. And I don't have a straight line tool on this thing. I wish I did have a straight line tool on this. Okay. So now this is a right angle because this is going north and that is 7.8 centimeters. All right. So, well, now what do we do? Okay. Well, we need to find the displacement and the distance. Now using a scale diagram, you don't have to do any math. Take your ruler. You are going to hold your ruler over this spot. You're going to draw a line. Now I like to make my resultants dotted lines. The reason I like to do that is because it distinguishes it from the raw data. And so what you're given with at the beginning of a question. On a scale diet, now notice my, uh, my arrows here, guys. I want you guys to pay very, very close attention to my arrow. Notice I've got the two arrows up here. Remember last year how you talked about how your vectors must line up tip to tail? In this case, so no, observe, your vectors are lining up tip to tail. That is how you determine the resultant. The resultant is not necessarily going to line up tip to tail. It's, it's tail is going to begin where you started. And the tip of that vector is going to wind up where the vector, the last vector finishes. Okay. So it's essentially start to finish. So if you are going west and then you're going north, your result is going to be pointing northwest. All right. So watch that vector because if you have an arrow going down this way, like for example, this blue arrow, that blue is wrong. That means you went in a circle and wound up back where you started. Okay. And that's not what happened here. All right. So be very, very careful. Watch out for that. All right. Okay. So you then take your ruler and you hold your ruler up to that line and you measure it. So I'm going to measure this on the screen. And I have like eight and a half centimeters. You guys might not get the same. I had eight and a half this time. Last time I did this question, I had 8.6 centimeters. If you have anywhere around the ballpark of eight and a half, that's okay. If you have 15, there's a problem. Now, the next thing to find your theta. Now, what am I finding here? What's this? Is that my displacement or is that my total distance? That's the magnitude of my displacement. Okay, now remember, this is a scale diagram. So my units aren't actually going to be kilometers or centimeters. Excuse me, they're going to be kilometers because we started with kilometers. Well, remember, ladies and gentlemen, we are now dealing with a two-dimensional vector here. So because we're dealing with a two-dimensional vector, that means I need a direction and it needs to be an angle. Well, when dealing with a scale diagram, grab your protractor. Now, my protractor is in my filing cabinet at school. I'm at home. So I'm going to use the value that I measured when I did this question last which is 66 degrees. You get that with a protractor. Okay, so 66 degrees, I'm done, right? No. I would take off points if you left it like this. You need to give it a reference point. Well, this is a west line. 
This is north. Okay, you draw your grid lines. North, west. You are, for this theta, as it's red, you start at the west line and you go towards the north. So it's 66 degrees. Whoopsie, I wrote it backwards. North of the west line. So it's 66 degrees north of west. Now, what's your other correct angle? Because there's two correct answers you can give me. So your 8.5, whoops, kilometers, okay, 90 minus 66, that's going to give you 24, okay, which would mean you would have a theta that would be your blue theta over here. So you'd be starting at the north and moving this way, which would make this west of north. So either of these two are going to be correct for A. All right. So on a scale diagram, you use, you, you literally make a scale diagram with a ruler and your protractor and you measure the values off of there. But these values, we don't do this anymore because of the inaccuracies. Like one time I got, the previous time I got 8.6 and this time I got 8.5 centimeters you guys are going to have values that are probably all going to be similarly off and that's okay. Back in the day, that's what we had. Now we use trick and that's going to be our next video. So for B, what is the total distance? Now, ladies and gentlemen, the distance covered is a scalar quantity and the distance means they want the total path that you took. So that means this blue dotted line here is the distance. That is the way that you marched. That's where you plonked your feet. So for B, you have to, what do you do? Add the values together. So you take your 3.5 kilometers plus your 7.8 kilometers, and it's going to give you so that'll equal your distance. So your distance is going to equal 11.3 kilometers. No direction, no angle, because distance is scalar. Now, ladies and gentlemen, notice I have put 11.3. That's correct, Sig Diggs. Why? Because we're adding. We were adding this. So, and when we're adding, your sig digs are going to be um, the number of decimals. So you had one decimal on each of them, so you need one decimal in your answer. All right? Okay. So I know this was a bit of a tricky subject. Um, if you are watching this at home, know that you might miss uh, the big treasure hunt um, drawing activity that we will do in class. That's okay, uh, because we're only going to be doing scale diagrams as kind of an idea of how to do it. I'm not actually assessing you on them for sake of time. Okay, the most important part of this lesson is going to be the angles stuff. All right, so all that stuff we looked at on referencing your angles, Give some of those practice problems a try. Practice your angles because we're going to be starting with 2D problems starting our next video, so our next lesson. And on that front, you need to use this angle stuff for the rest of the course. And it's going to be hugely intense for, with the angles for the next couple of sets of notes, okay? Next through the rest of the unit, the next three sets of notes. Um, as well, um, trig. Go back into your Math 10 notes and I want you guys to have a look and see, to do a bit of review at sine, cosine, tangent, and Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So just have a look at them and kind of refresh yourself a bit and we are going to do some review with that. And then we'll get started into 2D trig. Alrighty, you guys. Okay, so do your practice problems. All right, have a good day. No fires, injuries, or explosions. Talk to you guys later. Bye.